family welcome back to Auntie P restaurant yard today we are going to be making some stew peas but prior to getting into detail of the matter we're going to prepare certain things we're going to be needing some kidney beans or red beans um, is, is the choice I'm using kidney beans today I'm going to be using two cups of kidney beans now with the two cups of kidney beans I'm also going to wash them and in washing them, basically is ensuring that all the dirt or any debris or old beans are no longer a part of what we're going to use. The method behind it is this. If you have your water, you fill your container up with your water, you then wait for the beans to float to the top. The ones that floats to the top are typically the beans that are of no good use to us. So we're going to throw those out. You still want to search to make sure that's not so appealing is discarded as well. So here we are, we are washing our beans and we're going to discard this water. We're also going to be using, in this case, some pigtails, some beef stew bones, and I'm also going to wash that. Now along with all of that, we're going to combine everything in a pressure cooker. So this is the prep prior to. Now I've gone through and I have cut my beef up into trunk sizes, beef trunk sizes. I told you these are beef bones. So you'll find some bones in there. And I like that because I like, I like bone in my, in my, in my stew peas. Along with the pigtail, yes, those are bones, but those are sort of soft bones. Um, the, the beef, the beef uh, neck bones tend to offer a, a little more body to, 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 to your stew peas. Now, I've done that, and then I'm going to also, I'm going to also uh, trim up my pigtails, and then we're going to combine all. Now, after getting my two pounds of beef chunks washed, I'm doing the same with my pigtails. Now, the key about washing as well um, is ensuring that you're washing them with cold water um, because you're dealing with meat. Hot water is sort of pre-cooking your stuff when it's into a danger food zone category. So you're washing them, you wanna make sure that each one is nicely washed uh, properly. Now I will not be cutting these just yet. I will wait until they're partially cooked in order to, to cut them. And my reason for that is that um, at least then the bone will be easier to cut through. So I'm gonna partially cook it and then I will cut it by size to about the same size as my, my beef um, that I'm putting in. Now I'm gonna combine all peas the red beans, the red beans, the beef chunks, the pigtails, all added to my pressure cooker. I'm adding just enough water to cover my meat, whereas the adequate amount of water to my pressure cooker that's allowed without blowing its lid is what I'm using. Uh, periodically, I'm going to watch this make ensure that it's not drying out ensure that adequate fluid is in there as we go along the other thing i need to point out to everyone is you can choose to use salted pigtails or the fresh pigtails i'm using the fresh pigtails because after seasoning it and doing everything else that we're going to be adding to this it is less sodium than having to buy the salted pigtails and wait for it to to boil out in order or, or soaked out in order for you to cook so that your food is not over salted so this is the method in which i'm using and i'm also not using any coconut milk in this one um, down the road we'll do another batch you can choose to use your 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 stew peas vegetarian style which we're going to do another episode of um, we can use to use oxtails if you like 
pig's feet if you'd like but we're gonna do some 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 what do you call almost original because and why I say almost is because I'm not adding that coconut milk however I'm gonna put this on to pressure um, just like your oven of course each pressure cooker operates at its own different um, steam method so we're gonna time this periodically and ensure that all is well and we move on so after about 20 minutes I have ensured, I'm checking to make sure that my peas are actually cooked. And to know that your peas is, is fully cooked, it, it, it needs to be tender um, and, 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 and almost smushy. Not quite there yet, soft, but not quite where I want it to be. But what I'm also going to do is, not only am I checking for that, I'm also going to be adding a few seasoning. That ensures that it's also helping to blend in with everything we're doing. So, I am going to add three cloves. Because because this is a stew, you want all your seasoning to sort of boil into it. So, I'm adding three slow cloves of garlic, chopped finely. I've also added a tablespoon of pimento seasoning, some all-purpose seasoning, and some black pepper. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it all in. You can even rinse it all in, a little bit more water um, as well, to ensure that the moisture remains. Then I'm gonna seal back my pressure cooker, and I'm gonna put it back on the fire for another 15, 20 minutes, and we're gonna see just where we are after all that is done and ensure that all is cooked. So now that the peas are cooked nice and soft and they're split and they're tender, hence here we go. We're gonna then take this off to rest for a little while we have our spinners. Now the spinners is gonna be miniature dumplings, dumplings. Then we're gonna add all our seasoning, scallion, etc. Um, chop the time because we're gonna still cook this some more. We're gonna make some spinners or dumpling, right? And we're gonna add it in. Just got some time from the backyard. Um, I'm using maybe about. Whew, what is that, an ounce or so of fresh thyme? I'm using a quarter of a green pepper, a half of a small onion. I'm gonna cut it up real small, just to sort of put it in, because as I said, it's all gonna cook back out um, with the rest of everything else that's going on. So the peas is cooked, the pigtails are cooked. Um, we have already added some season um, to the already cooked product. So we're gonna then turn around and add some more items, right? We're gonna add some, a little bit of salt because remember we're using the fresh pigtail. We're not using the salted pigtail. So I'm gonna add some salt to it. I'm gonna add some um, garlic powder, even though I added that garlic. We have already added the black pepper. We're just gonna add it now, all of that, for the purpose of flavoring the rest of the food. Along with that, we're gonna make the spinners. So we're gonna drop all of that in there. And when we add the spinners in, when we add that spinners in, it also is now and then gonna cook. Now keep in mind, because the meat is already cooked, the spinners now is only gonna take a few minutes. I've already added one cup of flour. I'm gonna put in a pinch of salt. There's no need to have um, a whole bunch of flour and a whole bunch of of salt because you're just adding the spinners into the stew peas. Now along with that, here's what we're gonna do. We are just gonna add enough water each time to get the density. Um, and that is going to be up to you, how much flour you use. Um, and we're just gonna add some water. As I said, I'm using the, about one cup of water and I'm just trying to get the right mixture of dumpling with so I'm using the all-purpose flour um, in this case and as it is you see it's just sort of so I'm gonna add a just a touch more right I'm doing about a tablespoon each time just to get the right mixture of kneading this dumplings in or the spinners in for the purpose of what we're doing we don't want it too soft 
we don't want it to wear it is too hard because we're not frying it right we it in essence we're stewing it down so it, it, it's like you're boiling it sort of right so here we are um, as I've added it to what I need I think I got just the, just the right texture right here here we go it should be able to just sort of bounce back leaving no flour onto the container and here we are there we go there we go so so we're adding a tablespoon of browning in just enough to where it adds some color along with the peas and the pigtail and the beef um, to give it a little bit of a color to entice it um, so here we go look at that you can see the confirmation the formation the color changing there we go our peas are nice and rich and ready to go um, we're stirring it up just a little to get that perfect mixture going on and then as I'm boiling up I'm going to now then add my spinners in now the word spinners is simple so we made the dough and we spin that's it spin and drop right so you just sort of roll and drop pinch the flour dough roll it drop it so hence the word spinner so we're gonna spin it just like that and drop it in right and we continue until your your your, your dough is complete um, some people says there's two peas is not two peas unless it has a plenty spinners in so we're gonna add the spinners right and this in turn is all gonna cook together and make it wonderful so as I'm adding my spinners one of the other things that I'm going to do, because I'm not using the coconut milk, right? I'm going to use about two tablespoons of ketchup just to help thicken my, my stew, give it a little bit of a body. And then I'm going to cover it and I'm going to turn it down on, a, which it's been cooking now, on a medium heat. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more and, and allow it to all simmer and come together. Um, and we're gonna have, while this is going, I'm gonna put on some plain white rice because you can't have no stew peas unless you enjoy it with some white rice. So here we go. I'm just gonna squirt it in. Boom! There we go. Squirt that ketchup in there. Turn it around. Mix it all up. You see the stew. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. It is happening and happening now nieces nephew like share subscribe on youtube what must say love you boo boo stew peas without the coconut milk tasty and flavorful you won't even know you miss it i'm telling you see the nieces nephew what must say Auntie P, restaurant, a yard, turn up, like, share, subscribe, love you, boo boo. Oh my goodness, I know you're tasting it, I know you're salivating, I know you got this. Can't have no stupids without some white rice, I'm telling you. Wait for it. Oh, there it is. Taste it well together. Lovely. Like, share, subscribe, Auntie P, restaurant, a yard. Love you, boo boo! Family. Family, 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 family. Nieces, nephew. The fragrance is unbelievable. I mean, you can't have it no other way. May I tell you? Straight up. But we're going to do more stew peas down the road. We're going to do some vegetarian one. We're going to do some with some turkey neck. We're going to do some with some ox tail. We're going to, there's so many ways of enjoying some good stew peas. And you don't have no stew peas until you mix it all together. You mix your peas in with your rice. Look here. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect.
perfect, perfect. Wonderful. The spinners, the peas, the beef, the pigtail. Look there, just falls apart. Look at that. Pigtail just fall apart. It is so tender. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you can relate. It is so tender that when you done throw up the bone of the pigtail, nothing no left. The dog get mad. Mm-hmm. You know, family, see from me know myself. One of my most favorite dishes is either stew peas or red pea soup. And that still today has not changed. I love me some good stew peas. And I'm telling you, this here is some good stew peas. Mm. 